Hey there again. Thank you for coming back to watch another episode of Cancer as a Metabolic Disease. I want to tackle a, a developing topic within cancer research, and it's the idea of cancer stem cells. This is really uh, a very difficult place for modern medicine to be because modern medicine in general targets cancer cells that are rapidly dividing because they're treating a genetic disease. And as we learn more, we're, we're realizing that cancer is really its own beast in some ways. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a slide we'd saw earlier. So when cancer starts, we think that one cell transforms and then rapidly grows out of control and then starts to create its own infrastructure. And that's where this picture here comes in. And what this is without actually mentioning it is the cancer stem cell diagram without mentioning it in the, in the text. So as we can see here, we, we blow this up and it looks exactly the same. So in the last several years, there has been theories of these cancer stem cells. And, you know, like I said, since the, the, the majority of cancer therapy is based off of rapidly dividing cells, this is a real problem because cancer stem cells don't behave like the, the other cancer cells that are surrounding it. So the cancer stem cells, as you can see in this architecture, basically they hide in the middle of this tumor. And what happens is these ca cancer stem cells kind of are like the quarterback for the rest of the cells around it. They generally are kind of in this quiescent state. And, you know, tumor quiescence is not something that based off of the kind of the older theories of cancer was expected because I thought that all the tumors, all the, the entire tumor was growing out of control. And as we talked about in previous videos, the tumor is not homogeneous. That means that like every cell in the tumor is not the same. As a matter of fact, probably very few of them are the same. There may be upwards of like 10,000 different genetic subtypes of cancer within one tumor. And so this is a big problem. And as they've kind of like learned more and more, they think that this is a big way that cancer is not only uh, started, but progresses and develops tumor resistance. And that makes a lot of sense because if these cells are not rapidly growing at all, they're not going to be able to be killed by you know, drugs that interact with cell division. So I think that probably this is one of my favorite slides um, and the subsequent slide will be really good because as you can see here, we have like a primary tumor of mostly homogeneous cells. And as the tumor progresses, it starts to build this ecosystem in which these cancer stem cells are in the middle and the rapidly dividing cells are around it. And so if you look here, it says the current, you know, the current therapies, you know, induction of mortality or killing the cancer cells in the proliferative department. So it kills all these blue rapidly dividing cells around it. And then the cancer stem cells that are quiescent or quiet or, or not dividing kind of wake up and then now have learned what we've been throwing at it with drugs and become resistant. And now we have a drug resistant tumor that is now growing out of control that has very little effect on what we're doing with chemotherapy. So it also, for the most part, explains, you know, metastases and recurrence and relapse. Um, this is another picture of a very similar process. Basically, you have, you know, the primary tumor, which is this kind of conglomerate of different tumor type cells with the cancer stem cells in the middle. The cancer stem cells kind of break off, create their own, the other microenvironment. We end up killing them with cancer, you know, conventional chemotherapy, radiation, et cetera. You know, the goal obviously is for tumor er eradication, but what really happens is you get these resistance, resistant cancer stem cells that develop into a resistant tumor. And then ultimately the patient, you know, suffers as a demise because they're not able to eradicate the problem. The cancer is too protected. The cancer is too, I guess you'd want to say smart and able to evade the way we are currently treating therapies. Um, you know, if, if you do debulking, for example, let's say you were to do a surgery and one of these cancer stem cells can, you know, is there, 
then that's going to lead to this vicious cycle happening over and over again. If you end up with metastases, it's unlikely you're going to have resolution of your disease with the current model. And that's what makes it so problematic. So I want to segue in our next video talking about what is really a paradigm shifting and unifying theory to cancer. And that is treating cancer as a mitochondrial metabolic disease. Until next time.